Hello again guys, it's Gregolo Productions here and welcome back to the GPWS. And today we're going to be working on this Ingersoll Midget Dollar Watch here. So, it's it's funny, you know, for the last th oh, two years straight, basically, around Christmas time, we end up working on a dollar watch. And that's not, that's not intentional. This video I'm shooting here was originally going to be about West Clock dollar watches or pocket bends or something. I was going to pull out one of those from the night of a thousand and one dollar pocket watches and work on that but i decided i decided i didn't feel like it and i decided to work on this instead so here we go an ingersoll midget i don't believe there is a service for these on youtube as of yet this is the first time i'll be dealing with one so we're gonna get in here and we're gonna see what's cooking also uh just before we act well before we look at that closer what the heck is this stuff is that that almost looks like paint. Yeah, I'm not sure what the heck that is. That could be corrosion or paint or something else. I couldn't tell you. And now that we just got this thing really close up, look at the detail on this. Isn't that great? Yeah, this is a really, this is quite a pretty little watch. So, as you can see, our pendant is missing. I don't have a replacement. There's absolutely no plan there as to how I'm going to deal with that. I think I'm just going to leave it without a pendant for the time being and just get this thing running again. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this or if I'm going to sell it, I don't know. It depends how much we like this thing. And look at look at that plate in there. That's not very, oh, is our balance staff broken? Hmm. Uh, yeah, back to the plate. It's really nice in there. I like that design. I'm not sure how they would have done that, but Oh, and we're also forgetting this. This isn't filled out, but uh, apparently all the Ingersoll, or at least uh, or at least the midgets had this in there. And it's a shame that no one filled that out. Um, yeah, but that's what this would have looked like. Hmm, interesting. Maybe, maybe these people actually followed the advice. Maybe the previous owner actually followed the advice of the company and just didn't ever open the back of this thing. That could, enti that could entirely be why this was never filled out. Hmm. I guess it wasn't important to them to fill that, that out, but that's really neat that there's a paper label in there with all that info, and I'm definitely not gonna fill it out. Okay, is that balance staff broken? Generally, when you see a staff not really moving, that's not a good sign. Either that it could be super dirty or the staff itself could be broken. I don't know. This thing is fully wound. So obviously it's not running. Move our regulator, see if that does anything. Hmm. It doesn't appear to want to move there. There's a screw here. I'm thinking this is the first one I'm supposed to undo. So we'll just put our case back aside. This is all in really decent shape for the most part. There's a few scratches and stuff, but... We're not doing too bad on that front. And this is a strange land for me. I've never been inside this particular watch before, so we're gonna see just how this goes. So, let me see here. If our balance staff is broken, I can't fix that right now. And I see there's a tiny little screw right there. Okay. I guess I know where to start undoing them, then. I know where to start, at least. Let me see if this crown comes off, or how this all, how this is meant to come apart. Is this too big? Oh, no, it's just the right size. Wow, I thought this, okay. So right off the bat, this is already coming out. Uh, that screw is tiny. These screws, these screwdrivers I'm I'm using right now, these are magnetized. Uh, I know I'm working on a watch with a hairspring. So why in the Greg, are you stupid or something? Why in the world would you want to do that? This is what I've got on hand right now, and I haven't magnetized really any very few. I don't think I've well, I've got a demagnetizer, but I'm pretty sure I've only magnetized maybe one or two watches by doing this. If something gets magnetized, I have a demagnetizer, so we can always do that. But yeah, this is what I've got on hand right now. I think I'm going to probably get some new screwdrivers, though. Um, I got these when I wasn't really aware of that whole magnetism thing. 
and especially if I want to expand into higher grade pocket watches and wrist watches. And and you know what? It's like the, there's no benefit to having a magnetized screwdriver anyway. I mean, it does pick up screws, which is always fine, but. But if it's going to just make the movement entirely inaccurate, then, or if it's going to magnetize the hairspring and, you know, bots that whole system up, then you shouldn't have them. And that is a tiny little screw. Wow. That is, that is small. That is very small. Okay, we're going to put that in the, in the parts cup. That's why you have a parts cup. Our crown, that can go in there as well. So this was just held in there by that screw. There's a square end on that. Interesting. Okay. This is very much a parts watch. And we'll remove this screw. I think that's a case screw. It sure looks like one. Has all the hallmarks of one. It's on the outer rim. And it's bigger than all the others. And it looks like it's overhanging this, this outer layer. This is a fairly nice movement to... Well, case to disassemble anyway to start off with yeah that's probably a case screw that's, are those are those mismatched i'm not sure maybe this will just pop out of here now i don't want to press on that because that's glass what could i be missing now or it could just be stuck which is entirely you know possible because this thing has been sitting in here for years i i highly doubt this has ever been taken out of this case and you know what? There's actually... I could, I should take the glass off, actually. What am I doing? Oh, I'm so used to this area not coming off on other watches that I'm just... I don't even consider it with this one. There's probably screws and stuff here that I need to get into. There's the glass. Okay, let's see what we got going here. Okay, this hour hand is bent. Is that dial paper? Feels like that might be a paper dial. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'm supposed to. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that's how that. That's the key. So yeah, you, you press it through like that. So then there's our case. There's our movement out of our case. It's a tiny little movement. And I play with this. This doesn't feel broken. So we're just gonna see. We might just dab some oil on this thing. I, uh, that's obviously not a proper repair, but we might just dab some oil on this and just see if it'll even want to start. Like that's that's what I'm kind of curious about. And here's our dial and hands. It's very cute, this little guy. He's very small. I'm just gonna use my case opener to get these hands off. I think, okay. Uh, yeah, um, I didn't even get to finish that sentence. We're using the case, we use the case opener because it just seems like a good tool for the most part. And I might just be able to lift this off by hand here. Yep, there it goes. That's bent, I'll have to straighten that. This is coming apart remarkably easy at the moment. How does this, oh, there's tabs. Oh shoot, everyone's favorite game. Unbend the tabs, and yeah, this is, this is a paper dial so I shouldn't be playing around with with stuff okay we're just gonna be very gentle and unbending these things i can't really get a good grip on it so i have to go in like that kind of and pry it up oh, shoot unbend the tabs my favorite yeah you gotta be very careful with that system okay okay that's I've got my screwdriver in there. Very, very slow, very careful. I'm just gonna do this instead because this seems smarter. I don't wanna I don't wanna get my fingernails, I don't wanna catch any of that the, on the dial there, the paper dial, I don't wanna catch it. Okay, I don't know what I'm prying off now. Here's the I don't wanna separate this piece of paper from the dial pan. For obvious reasons okay let's see what i can do here let's get that one. Oh yeah that's okay there's the front of the wow okay there's the front of the movement there's the dial we've got two feet there and this why does this feel like it's okay that's probably gonna have to be re-glued um 
Yeah, I don't want that. That's a nice little dial. That'd be a good one to scan and make reproductions of if you needed to. So yeah, what we're going to do here, I'm going to see if this thing will even run, period. Um, we're just going to dab some oil on this and just see what the heck it does. Okay, so there's this. There's that dial washer. There's a knob. I see there's two. Oh, those, those aren't, okay. I thought that was something I needed there for a second. I thought that was, I thought those were uh, marks or something. I thought that was a positive and a negative there for some reason, I'm not sure. Okay, there's part of our motion work. And you know what, I'm gonna get the other tweezers here. Yes, I do have tweezers, believe it or not, guys. Okay, there's nothing else there that I need to take off. Whoops, there's a small backflip there. Uh, yeah, we can just kind of oil this. Oh, there's a bit of play there. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're just gonna oil this and see where we wind up from here because if that staff's broken, I can't fix that. You know, that is something that I don't have the equipment to do because I need a staking set for that. So, we're just gonna see what the heck happens here. And I'm not gonna be too careful with this. This is not what you, this is not professional oiling by any means. I'm just gonna see what the heck happens here. This is not what you do. You don't want oil going everywhere like it is on here. This movement just seems old and dry. It just seems dry. So, they're all old, but this, this doesn't seem like, uh, it doesn't seem like anything's broken on it, at least not that I can see. Let's oil the escape wheel teeth. And I definitely want to get in there and get as much as I can on this. Okay. It's probably going to take some playing with, so I'm just going to skip ahead and just see where we wind up. Okay, so we've just lathered this in oil here, and obviously that's not, you know, that's not a service. We're going to keep going with this. It won't start, but it has loosened everything up, and it feels like this balance wheel, it feels like the staff isn't broken on that. There is a bit of play, but it feels like this is good. So we are going to keep going, and the next thing we're going to do, and oh yeah, as you can see, if you, if you notice there, it's getting stuck over here. I think there's some kind of piece of dirt stuck in this balance cup here, or in this cone bearing. Yeah, this is not okay. <laughs> Don't oil the hairspring when you're trying to do this stuff, guys. If you're just trying to get it a very rough kind of start, don't use your good oil either. Just use, like, literally sewing machine oil or something. Just some kind of light oil. Uh, even, I, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what my views are on using um, cheaper oils, are like, on these watches. I mean, I use Liberty Oil, so that's not expensive at all. I don't know. We'll talk about oiling more later, I guess. Uh, now, let's take our hairspring out of the... Pff, let's not kill the hairspring here first, guys. Let's take our hairspring out of the taper pin there. So this doesn't have a balance cock like, uh, like higher grade movements. This has a bridge, which is pretty cool. But it does not have that kind of cock thing on there. And it doesn't... And I, don't, I think those have taper pins as well. But you don't... I don't know. Most guys don't... Uh, don't dis disassemble that. On this, we entirely are going to disassemble that because I, that's it's just a more thorough. I, I think it's more thorough if we go and do that. So we're just going to get in here with a movement holder, spin it like that, and I've got a plastic. There it is, plastic lid to support this area, this side. And we're going to take our movement and just stick it in there. This thing is nice and neat looking. It really is. Like it's very clean. The design. There's not. There's not all these weird things sticking out on all all weird angles or whatever. Okay, so that's what we have to unpin right there. So I'm just gonna see here. We're gonna turn the light on. Isn't that much better? Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure when this watch is from. I hadn't found a date code as of yet. Oh, there's a code though. Fit or fifteen. 458139 and that says made in the USA. This is a Canadian program you're watching right now, so someone has 
either they were um, importing these here. I'm not entirely sure how all that went. Okay, so there's the balance wheel. And you can see there's a bit of an offset bend right where the taper pin is. Maybe you can't see it, or maybe I'm just I'm imagining things. That's a nice straight hairspring. Clearly no one has messed with this and bent it out of shape. Has this thing been serviced before? Very hard to say. You know, it's very hard to say whether this has been worked on before now. Um, and yes, guys, I will work on getting some finger cots. I want to research that whole thing more. But, you know, it is entirely possible to get your fingerprints on here, I'm thinking. And that's not good. You don't want to do that because that's just a sloppy job. Okay, we'll get our tweezers in there. I need, obviously, bigger ones. Whoa. Wrapped around that. Okay, I'm not getting the grip I want. Uh, and yeah, if I ru one wrong move and that hairspring gets bent out of shape, now who wants to do? Who wants to straighten that around? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Let's just whoops. Let's look at this some more. Okay. Maybe it'd be smarter to pull it this way. You know what, I need a surface to actually put this on. I can't do it in the air like that. That's how you slip. That's how all kinds of disasters take place. Okay, so there's our taper pin. Oh, that was, okay. That's getting, that's getting there, sort of. And I feel like this hairspring is just a little bit too small to go in the back or try and get around that somehow. I feel like that's not going to be a good idea if I do that. And this won't even fit in my movement holder here. Maybe, I'll... all right, let's try this. That's why you have two sides to these things. Let's try this now. Maybe that's what this was designed for. Yeah, there it is, okay. There we go. So. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I might need my actual pliers to do that. These things are tight. Ah, uh, it's too big, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yo. Okay. Hmm. What tool could I use to get in there? Oh, there it goes. Um, where the heck did the taper pin go now? I pulled it out. Oh, okay. For a second there, guys, I thought I lost it, but no. Uh, lesson learned. Okay. Stick that in there. And then if we pull this out, we can, yeah, there it goes. It's all loose now. Take a toothpick and just help it along there a little bit. Keep turning the wheel back. Yeah, we don't need that in there now. I can't see if there's any weird bends on the end of that, so I don't know if there's some kind of something blocking that or whatever. I, I'm scared to pull on it with my tweezers. Although we might have to because it doesn't look like there's anything... It doesn't look like there's any other way. Very gently. Okay. Phew. I thought sometimes hairsprings, they'll have a weird little bend on the tip somehow, and it'll essentially lock them in place. And with the with a, a balance set up like this, you don't want that. Because you basically don't have access to it. Really at all. I'm going to be very careful here not to bend any of this stuff out of shape. 
well, bend any of this stuff. I said a hairspring. You can't bend. You don't want to bend that. Try and tease it through that hole. If you're going to pull on it, you want to be very, very gentle. I can't tell if that's bent, like twisted to the side a little bit. I don't know if that's original or not. I don't think I did that. Let's get that regulator out of the way. Yeah, it's twisted just a it's twisted that certain way there. I don't know if that's original or not. I know I definitely was not pulling on it that hard so that we found it like that, folks. This this is very dark. This whole kind of thing here. Let's just turn this around. A lot of shadows here. Okay, now we'll take our all this apart. We'll take our bridge off. Come on. There we go. You don't want to strip any of this. Everything is very, very small. I don't think I've ever worked on a watch as small as this before. Okay, there we go. You can see where the magnetic parts are handy, though, hey? We'll just pull this off. Our balance wheel is going to flip-flop to the ground. There's the bridge. There's the cone bearing or balance cup. And there's the bridge there again. So take our balance wheel out of here. Pretty decent system. Look at that baby little hairspring. Look at that. It's tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. We'll deal with him later. I'm gonna put him in the in the parts cup. Oh, and but actually, let's look at that staff while we've got this thing open here. Oops. Let's look at this side. That's definitely not broken. And neither is that side there. Okay, well, we're just going to leave it at that then. This, now we've got all this open here. See how the thing looks like increasingly less complicated as we go along? That's that's exactly, you know, that's that's how this stuff turns out. So, you know, when you take bridges off and stuff, and then suddenly you just have a base kind of movement there. Yeah. So, anyways, guys, thank you for joining me through the first part of this Ingram, or sorry, Ingram, let's try that again, Ingersoll midget. And we will be back in the next part to disassemble this movement. And Well, first we'll let the mainspring down, then we'll disassemble this movement, and then we'll start cleaning it. Thank you, guys, and have a good day.